we have an understanding of what it is, and we kind of know how we can get it, but how can we take hope and make it a central figure in our lives? Thank you for joining me on Walking with the Word. I'm Jonathan Burns, your host of this program. I appreciate you being with me on Mondays. This is when the program comes out, and we have about a 15-minute lesson every Monday designed to help you to help me take God's Word and walk with it more and more every day. Now, we want you to be a vital part of our program. Visit our website at www.twtv.org and click on that survey tab. There you can fill out a Google form and you can submit your information to us and we use what you suggest as the ideas and topics for what we're going to study on our program. Just like the one today, how we can have a heaven outlook with hope at our core. So we're going to try to define hope and figure out what hope is and make it applicable in our lives today. Now it's interesting to me when you just search the English word hope. In the New King James Version of the Bible, you'll find the word hope 143 times. You see it most used in the Old Testament in the Psalms and most used in the New Testament in the book of Romans. And in these two areas, we're going to find our areas of study because we're going to find hope in Psalms hope in Romans, and then we'll transition today to one passage that does not have the word hope in it, but it is the essence, the, the stability of hope, so that we can find hope in today. Let's start off by looking at hope in the book of Psalms, and let's start and see what we find in the book of Psalms. Here's the first passage I want you to see, Psalm 19.6. Therefore, my heart is glad... My glory rejoices, my flesh also will rest in hope. The psalmist here in this occasion is writing about all sorts of different things that happen in life. And he's talking about how God provides and how God encourages. And he talks about the hope that is given by God to man. Matter of fact, a majority of the times the word hope, if not almost all the times, the word hope is used in the book of Psalms has to do with what God has given man, what God has done for man, what God has said for man, and how God gives this great hope. And he starts out talking about, because God has done all of these wonderful things, my heart will rest in hope. So number one, as we start thinking about hope today, hope is something that gives us rest. At least that's what the psalmist says. Here's the second passage from the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 147, verse 11. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him, in those who hope in His mercy. Now the first passage we looked at just a moment ago from Psalm 16:9 was the first occasion of hope in the Psalms. Uh, this one in Psalm 147 is the last occasion you'll see the English word hope in the book of Psalms. And we recognize in both of these occasions, they have to do with this hope that comes down from God. But in Psalm 147, it's coupled and connected with God who takes pleasure in those who fear Him, those who respect Him. God is certainly worthy of our respect, not only as Creator, as Sustainer, as Savior. God is worthy of our respect because of who He is and what He has done. And you and I need to learn more in our lives to respect God. Maybe it's in our personal thoughts. We need to rein in our respect of God. Uh, maybe it's in our families. We need to rein in this respect of God. Uh, maybe it's in our homes as a whole, or even this, in all the things that we love to do. We need to rein in our respect of God. What we are willing to do, what we are unwilling to do, how we live, how we talk, that has to do with respect and respect of God. But he talks about in this passage about how you and I can be people who are God's. We are His and we have this hope in His mercy. In other words, we deserve something so worse than we have received, but God gives us His mercy. And we have a future expectation of this mercy that God gives. So the psalmist tells me and he tells you, I can have hope because I work to follow God. Not only that, there's one passage I want you to see in the Psalms that will help me understand how I can get hope. It's Psalm 119, 114. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope 
in your word. How do you build hope? Is hope something that just is naturally instilled in us? We hope for something better. Is hope something that God just gives to us? We, he, he hopes, He provides hope so that we can have an expectation of Him. Or is hope something that's coupled with the greatest resource of the world? Now, depending on how you live and, and how your worldview is, is how you'll answer this question, what is the greatest resource of the world? Now, I know oil and lithium and other things of that nature, they're of great debate today on their valuableness for you and I. I also understand that there are other resources like water and air and other things that are extremely valued. Maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, gold is valuable. <laughs> Boy, isn't it? But what is the most valuable resource in this world? May I suggest to you today that the most valuable resource that you and I have today is exactly what the psalmist was talking about. You are my hiding place, my shield. I hope in your word. You and I have God's word that provides hope. And God's Word is what gives hope. And the psalmist has told us we can take pleasure in hope. So we have hope in Psalms. Let's notice next, hope in Romans. Notice with me Romans 8, 24. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Uh, my little boy just turned five. He's my youngest. And we just recently had a birthday party for him. And he was telling me one day before his party that, that he hoped he got this and he hoped he got that. And I said, buddy, how do you know you're going to get these things? He said, I don't, but I want them. He was so excited. He had this childlike joy, this childlike essence about him. Because he expected something that was beyond his imagination. And, and I hope that he looks back on his birthday and says, it's exactly what I hoped for. But that's hope, ladies and gentlemen. He didn't know it was coming. He didn't know it was going to be. But when it was there, it was exactly as he had imagined. He hadn't seen it before and therefore he knew but he had heard about a birthday. He had heard about gifts and presents and people being there and cake. People singing to him, happy birthday. And it was exactly what he received. And Paul writes to the Romans and he talks about how this hope of which they have is not a hope that they've seen. Otherwise, it's not hope. It's just some kind of void expectation. But hope is something that trusts that there is something greater coming. The book of Romans tells me about hope. The book of Romans also tells me in Romans 12, 12 that we must rejoice in hope be patient in tribulation, and continually steadfast in prayer. Here in Romans 12, that sandwich section, he's talking about all of these Christian virtues and values, things that compromise what we are as Christians. And guess what we do? Paul says in the book of Romans, we rejoice in hope. In other words, hope is valuable to us. But let's, let's kind of figure something out about hope like the psalmist showed us how we can have hope. Paul tells us in Romans 15, 4, For whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. It is the Scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, that give us hope. And therefore, I want to ask you this question, and it's valuable to you, and, and it's valuable to me, but today do you have hope? And what I'm really asking you is are you connected with the Word? Our program that you're watching and we're participating in together right now is called Walking with the Word. And the idea is designed that we may go forth and live out, walk with God's Word. Not just on Sundays, not just on special days, but every day we walk with the Word. Do you walk with the Word? Do you have hope? Now, what's beautiful about this passage that Paul's writing here in the book of Romans, he talks about all those things that have taken place in the past. And they could have hope from them. And you and I today can look at all of those things that took place and we can have hope from them. We can have hope from the Old Testament because God, He treated man fairly. 
We can have hope in the New Testament because God, He saved mankind, including you and including me. All we have to do is hear and obey a Savior who cares. So here's what we've done today so far. Hope in Psalms. Hope in Romans. Let's move to the third place. Hope in today. Now every passage so far we've looked at has had the word hope in it. This one won't. But it's going to be the definition of hope. It's going to be the essence of hope. It's going to be the totality of hope. It is hope, ladies and gentlemen. Because let me tell you something. We're going to look at a passage. I'm going to give you the numerics about it, not the book yet. 1115. You just think about it and see if you can figure it out until we get there. But this is a passage that if this thing does not happen, nothing else matters. If this thing is not true, let's pack it up and go home. If this cannot be fulfilled, then I have no hope. Here's the passage. It's Revelation eleven fifteen. The seventh angel sounded. And there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Folks, if Christ does not reign forever and ever, then we have no hope. The book of Revelation is a complicated book, though it is also simplistic. It's complicated because sometimes we get lost in some of the visionary images. We want to know what they mean, and, and sometimes they're just visionary images. But we get lost in all those things, and, and sometimes we forget to see the surface things that we can see. And The greatest thing about the book of Revelation, it's a two-word overview. Christ wins. Folks, He's going to reign forever and ever and ever and ever. And boy, we could go on for a thousand more evers. And we would not even touch the hem of Christ who is going to reign. But Christ reigns. Christ is supreme. And there's no one that can take that away from Him. He is the one that wins. Now here's the beautiful part. Here's how we can have hope in today. If Christ wins, we win. If Christ wins, we win. We need to know that Christ wins. And we need to know that we can win so that you and I, we can have this great hope today. What a blessing it is to have hope and what an opportunity it is to take hope and to put it into our lives so that we can have a better view of God, so we can have a better view of today so that we can really contemplate eternity. As we go through our program and as we went through our program, I, I hope, I use that word because I don't know it for you, I hope you found an expectation in Christ today that will help you live for Him, focus for Him, and be more for Him. So let's take God's Word and walk with it every day.